Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. Uh, my name is Adi Vax. I'm the executive director of sales at Web's Planet. Uh, Web's Planet has been partners with uh, the Golden Pages in Greek for the past, I think, five, six years, something like that. Uh, and what we're doing together, we are providing the technology that allows them to offer all the beautiful things that Irene just uh, talked about. Um, so. Today we're going to be talking about creating your own digital footprint, your initial digital footprint. Um, and before I start talking about how to do it, let's talk a bit about why to do it. Um, so creating your own digital footprint, why bother? And just before I, I do start that, let's start with a short video that I think gives a good idea. <laughs> Okay, so indeed we did some amazing things before the internet, but still, I mean, can you imagine life today without the internet? Horrible vision. Um, can you imagine, for example, going out to a restaurant and actually having to stand in line because you weren't able to book a table in advance, or, I don't know, drive somewhere and not having Google Maps to assist you, having to remember how to go there, it's crazy. Um, or the worst thing, you know, texting someone, um, but not knowing if the message got to them, and even worse, heaven forbid, you know, don't know if they actually read the message. Horrible things. Um, so take a minute, let's understand why these things have become so important. And I think the main reason is because of the way that we like things served today. Um, I, I saw a lot of people raising their hands and regarding to when they were born, so I'm sure you're all familiar with the uh, phrase instant generation. We all like things that are basically served to us instantly. Um, and due to the technological advances and things that happened in the past years, um, internet has become much faster, much cheaper, much more available for us. Um, and basically this has led to something else. Um, these days we have so much information brought to us that we just can't go through it all. We just simply don't have enough time to go through all the information that we can get out there. And if, needless to say, time is money, we need to now understand how to spend our time or our money efficiently. So how do we manage? Um, in order to still be able to sort out and filter and get all the information that we are looking for, we're leveraging technology. Um, let's take as an example uh, an average shopping experience. Let's say that you're now looking to buy a new TV set. Um, if it was 20 years ago, like we just saw, most likely your experience would start off by going a few, to a few shops around your neighborhood in the radius. Um, maybe you got some uh, newspapers, you saw some coupons or some ads, you'd go there specifically, right? You do your research. 
Um, and then finally, find the TV set you're looking for, the price that's relevant for you, and hopefully buy something at the store, go back home. Um, and this would probably take somewhere between a few hours, maybe even a few days. Today, thanks for, to internet, I assume most of you would simply open, I don't know, Amazon, eBay, whatever stores that they know today, um, sort out the category, the price, you know, the, um, the price that you're willing to pay, see what people are saying about the product, the reviews, and then usually in most cases also buy this online. Um, this would probably take something like, I don't know, 10 minutes to two hours tops. Okay, so reducing time due to technology is something that we're doing all the time without even noticing. And what this means is that in order to be in the game and to even be considered when someone is looking for a product that you're offering, you have to be there, you have to be online. If you're not online, they're never gonna see you. So if this is not persuasive enough, here are five more reasons why digital footprint is super important these days. So the first is mainly uh, easy accessibility. Um, you know, the internet as opposed to you never sleeps. It's there all the time. Um, it's very good for people who are working and still need to buy their TV sets or whatever uh, product they're looking for. And if you're online, you're allowing them to do that whenever they want to, wherever they want to. They don't have to physically come. They don't have to do it only in your opening hours. It's a 24 seven showroom available for them. Um, so this is one very important reason why you need to be online. Second thing has to do with your brand. So in order basically to get customers, especially when you're a, a boutique company or a local company, um, you need to gain the trust of your customers. And in order to gain their trust, one of the things you have to do is be out there and get good reviews. Okay, so by um, putting your online presence and letting customers write reviews, tell others what they think about you, you're gaining good reputation and eventually this can affect um, poten other potential buyers to say, okay, this store got good reviews, they have good products, I'm willing to try this, uh, this store. Third thing, obviously, is more audience. So if once, you know, we would go to the local stores and people who are around us, stores that are around us, if I'm online and I have online presence, I'm broadening or expanding the amount of potential customers that I have. So I'm expanding my funnel, the, the target audience, and hopefully eventually get more uh, sales. So I'm not limited only to my radios, to my neighborhood or something like that. Fourth reason is uh, reviews and feedbacks. And some experts would say that this is a double-edged sword. Uh, because if someone writes bad things about you, this can really, really harm your business. Um, but if you are willing and you are you know, doing your job properly, you're giving good services, good products, you know how to treat your customers and you're getting good reviews, then this is an excellent tool for getting more customers and, and basically turning leads into revenue. I can tell you from my own experience uh, about a year yeah, about a year ago, I wanted to send, uh, uh, one of my friends gave birth and I wanted to send out a fruit basket to the hospital. Um, so of course I went online, I found a store and I went off with the um, order. It never got there on time and it was pretty ridiculous because she had left home and only then the basket arrived, which of course made me very, very upset. Um, and not only this hasn't arrived on time as it was promised, the uh, sales representative contacted me and started yelling at me that they had lots of orders and they couldn't make it on time and you know lots of excuses that I really didn't give a sorry um, I just wanted it to be there on time for my friend so I was so so frustrated I actually got online and I don't do this all the time but this was a very outstanding experience I went online and I gave them one star and I actually wrote out what had happened I think it was five or ten minutes until she called me back. This time she was all nice and polite. I am so sorry that you're not happy with the service and the product didn't get on time. How can I uh, uh, reimburse you? And what she kept saying and asking me to do was to take off the bad review that I posted. So this has tons and tons of 
um, consequences for the businesses. Reviews can be devastating, but on the opposite, if you're doing the good service, they can be amazing and they can really help you with your uh, um, products and with your sales. Now, I know it says five reasons. There are only four icons. I wasn't able to think of a proper icon for the next one, but I'm sure you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. You know how sometimes you walk into a store, you want to look for some product, you know, minding your own business, comparing and reading, and so all of a sudden the salesperson comes and starts blah, 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 right, in your ear and telling you why this is amazing and why you have to buy it. And, you know, it's a very famous saying that people like to buy things, but they don't like to be, um, they don't like things being sold to them. So when you're online, you get to, you know, research, do this quietly. No one is, you know, babbling in your ear. You can really take the time to read about the product, the advantages, the disadvantages, and do your research, and if you remember, that's where I started out with, uh, of the whole research towards buying something. So, some statistics, okay? According to a uh, um, pretty new research or report from Deloitte Access Economies, this was published last year, um, within the next five years, at least half of sales will involve some sort of digital tools. Not necessarily online and e-commerce, but can be um, with SEO, it can be with advertising online, it can be with uh, referrals, lots of different aspects in that. And this means that SMBs that ignore the digital will be severely disadvantaged, okay? If we're talking about the game out there and who's gaining, who's losing, this will become a very big disadvantage. A key finding in this report says that SMBs that invest in technology uh, experience faster revenue growth. And to be even more precise, it's talking about increasing 1% in your online spend results in an increase of 2.9% in your revenue growth. That's, in my opinion, that's crazy. Um, and definitely means that it makes it worth your while. Um, in the report, 47% of SMBs state that retaining existing customers is their top priority. Um, and, you know, technology is key in doing that in the sense that if you're using digital tools and digital solutions that are offering, that are offered out there, you can gain lots of insights about what your customers are looking for when they're searching. Um, when they're searching, you know, you can do very targeted marketing uh, um, and then gain, again, gain more customers around that and retain your existing customers. Over half of SMBs are planning to expand their digital strategy, whether it's simply to make more sales online or to add digital channels. So again, I think, you know, the, the, the future is quite clear in this sense. I mean, online is very, very important. It's just gaining more and more people, more and more money is spent on that. And if you want to be part of this game, you have to be there as well. Um, having said all that, gaps still exist, um, and more specifically, I can say that only 22% of SMBs are using CRM software or services today in order to engage with their customers. Uh, under a quarter have the capability to capture online customer behavior, and only 15% have the ability to personalize online customer experience. So again, the gap still exists, but if you just saw the slide uh, a few slides back ago, 1% more spent in digital leads to 2.9% uh, in revenue. So I think it's definitely um, worth your while. So uh, conclusions, I think first, um, being online or having your online presence definitely allows you to get more customers. It increases your customer's loyalty and can reduce your churn. Okay, so now we understand why it's so important. Let's talk a bit about how to do it. So uh, what's next? You know, digital or online presence, they are really, really huge terms, and it includes uh, website and domains and hosting and email and marketing and, you know, so, so many things. But just like when you start out a new business, you have to start somewhere. My advice would be to start with a website, start with the basics. Um, so a website, first of all, it's a reflection of your business, and in a lot of times, in a lot of senses, a one-man show business that's run just by you and you're doing all of it, online, if it's designed properly, if it's written properly, 
can come across as a very experienced business with a staff of 20 people, you know, something very, very professional. So, <coughs> sorry. So make sure, first of all, to have it designed properly and written properly, and most of all, focus on turning leads to customers, meaning uh, direct them to the relevant pages, to the contact us pages, or to your catalog, or to your e-commerce uh, page, right? You need, need to be very, very focused in terms of the customer journey that you want them to go through on your website. Now, um, in terms of how, if you think you're capable of doing it yourself, if you're the Superman type that Irene mentioned earlier, you can definitely use one of the DIY tools out there. Um, and, you know, uh, very openly speaking, WebsPlanet, we offer these tools as well. Um, but, you know, it, I can be, again, very honest and say that, you know, running your business is a very, very time-consuming task as it is. And creating a website, doing it properly with the right messages and the right marketing is, you know, it's a, it's a professional's work. Um, so my suggestion would be focus on the things you do best, which is manage your business and have someone professional do it for you. Um, so I guess the question would be who? So who would be the proper person to build the website for you? Um, and again, I'm working globally with companies all over the world and the best uh, advice that I can give you is find someone that can really be a one-stop shop for you. Meaning if you're just starting off, they can offer a website, but maybe later on you'll be ready to um, start offering online services like uh, um, e-commerce, or maybe you want them to do the email campaigns for you. Maybe you want them to be able to get the domain and the hosting and the email. You know, find one person or one company that can provide all these services to you, um, both because this will allow you to expand easily as your business grows. Um, but more than that, you know, working with one provider can save you a lot of time. And again, time is money, and this is what we're always after, more and more time. So this can save you time because you don't have to start doing negotiation with uh, several providers. You have one that's doing that for you. Um, and of course, it can save you money because if you're going to spend all your digital or all your online budget in one vendor, then you become kind of like a preferred customer in their eyes, which eventually will provide you the VIP treatment that we're always uh, looking for. Um, so that's my advice regarding, regarding websites. Um, get a domain, of course. Try to get a domain that is exactly the same as your business name. If it's already taken, try to use something as close to it as possible. Be mobile. Um, this is a very, very important tip that I can uh, share with you today. According to Google uh, um, official announcement, over 50% of search today is being done through mobile. Um, people are more and more frequently doing it with your smartphones, whether it's uh, from the middle of the class or on, uh, in the middle of your uh, day job or even in the toilet, sorry. But people are doing that all the time from their mobile device. So you want to make sure that you're available on uh, mobile devices as well. Be social. People, be social. It's important. Um, not just in terms of being uh, nice to one another, but again, according to statistics, 30% of online shoppers have um, stated that they would likely to be purchasing something from one of the social um, networks they're working on. I can tell you from my own experience, I'm not doing so much online shopping, but when I was on my previous maternity leave, I was a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram, and I got lots of very direct uh, marketing for baby clothes and baby toys and things like that. And doing it from Facebook kind of gave me a certain feel that it's okay because it's from Facebook, it's a very known brand, it's not somewhere in China that I don't know if it will ever make it to my house or not. Um, and in fact, 20% of, uh, of SMBs actually stated that their preferred um, social network from which they would online shop is Facebook, so keep that in mind. Get noticed. Right? This is really, really important because Let's say you have the website, it looks beautiful, you got Golden Pages team working on it, designing it beautifully, doing all the uh, necessary things in order to get the website, um, but now who is going to see it, okay? If you're not investing in, in the right 
well, I'll, I'll give it the naming in a second, but if you're not investing in being found, it's kind of like having a great store with no front door. So you want to make sure your front door is nice and shiny and beautiful and big and inviting people from the street to come in to see your product, see what you have to offer, um, and then, of course, try to convert them into actual uh, customers. So when I'm talking about being noticed, I'm talking about a few elements. So one, I'm sure you heard the term SEO, or search, uh, search engine optimization. Um, so again, there are people who can do that for you. This is a whole huge topic for its own, um, but it's super important because if you're not on Google, as Irene mentioned, and if uh, someone searches for, I don't know, uh, the best coffee shop in town and you weren't on Google and one of the front pages, they probably won't know you. Um, and in that matter, not just Google, but generally um, you want to make sure you're listing your business in the relevant listing. Because if someone's going to look for a coffee shop or a restaurant, they're probably going to do it on Yelp or TripAdvisor or somewhere which is relevant to this specific category. And last but not least, submit your website to search engines. Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever you're using. Um, and each of these getting found topics is a professional and requires professional um, knowledge, okay? Um, it's just like, I don't know, if the toilet was broken, you wouldn't put the gloves on and go try to fix it yourself. You'd probably call the plumber to do it for you. My advice, don't try to start being, you know, uh, the best there is in SEO because eventually you know how to run your business best. Let the other who know how to do that best do that for you. Send emails. And when I'm talking about emails, I'm talking about email campaign. So by this point, you have a great website. You have all the fundamentals. You know how to direct people to the relevant places. They know when you're open, what your address is, how to get there, who they're going to meet there, what your products are, everything is great. Um, but this covers only the people who are actively searching for products that you're offering. Think about customers who already purchased something in the past and now they're not necessarily looking for more products. Or think about all the people who might want to buy what you have to offer but not currently going online and searching for it. Sending out some email campaigns to your customers kind of reminds them of your existence. You can remind them you have new, new stores, uh, new, sorry, new products that you're offering now. You might want to offer them some coupons because they're our customers. And this creates kind of like a, a buzz in the market. They will probably tell their friends about it. And don't underestimate the power of word of mouth recommendations. It's one of the most powerful things um, you can gain today. And again, think of yourself. If you have one of your friends telling you, you know, I got a new amazing product from this person, you'd most likely listen to them more than you would to some review you read online or anything of that sort. So try to use email campaigns. They can, tar they can be very targeted. They can be in a very specific place and time that is relevant to your specific audience. Catalogs on your website. If you're not ready to start offering online um, selling or e-commerce as we know it, at least have a product catalog on your website. And again, we started out talking about how people are making their research before they start buying uh, something and they want to gather all the information, they want to know what you have to offer, so make sure you put it out there. There's nothing more annoying than getting on a website seeing a product that you're looking for and then not knowing how much it costs or not knowing if it's uh, available or the color or the size or, you know, depending on the product. So make sure you put all the information out there so that the potential customers can go ahead, read about it, learn about it, and eventually, hopefully, pick you as their service provider and make the purchase from you. Last but not least, e-commerce. If you are ready, uh, to get online and start selling online, I can tell you e-commerce is booming and the number of stores that are online is just growing and growing all the time. Um, you need to make sure, you know, a few things to, to keep in mind. So you need to make sure that you're offering good user experience 
for the shopper, they, that it's easy to find the product, they get all the information they want, the whole procedure until checkout is fast and seamless. Um, and if this is, uh, you still need some encouragement and need some more numbers, here are some, uh, some statistics. Uh, so 67% of millennials, the, the um, instant generation we talked about earlier, and uh, 56 Sorry, 56% of Gen Xers prefer to shop online rather than in store. Uh, that's an amazing fact in my opinion. Millennials and Gen Xers spend six hours per week shopping online. Again, huge amount. Uh, parents spend more of their budget online in comparison to non-parents, and I just expose myself, I'm part of this percentage, 40% uh, versus 34%. And they spend 75% more time online shopping each week. Um, so again, if you're offering, I don't know, baby clothing or things for parents, courses, books, whatever, keep that in mind. This one's very interesting, uh, considering my husband who hates to go shopping and is willing to pay, just not go with me to the mall to buy something. Uh, men reported spending 28% more online than women during the past year. So for all you women out there, um, one thing, try to get your men online. You're uh, increasing the chances he will buy something. Uh, but for you who is offering uh, merchants that are uh, targeting men, keep that in mind as well. Um, men and women both report spending five hours per week shopping online. And although they have uh, uh, greater chances of uh, uh, finding a local store, customers in large or mid-sized metropolitan areas spend more time online rather than uh, suburban shoppers or those in rural areas. So again, even if you are living here or in Athens or in the big areas, keep that in mind because still the amount of audience that you have um, out there online is much bigger than the one in your radius. Um, and almost a quarter of online shoppers, 23% to be precise, are influenced by social media recommendations. So make sure to be social and make sure to encourage, not just offer the reviews option, but encourage your happy customers to write a review, whether it's with a coupon or some kind of discount, try to encourage them to do that. Um, that's my 50 cents. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here until the event is over. And, uh, Thank you very much.